Hello, Dr. Ron England here, and welcome to Programming for Engineers. This is lecture number four, and we're using the Spider, uh, which is part of Anaconda uh, Python environment, and we're going to get into some really cool stuff. I'm going to try. To, I'm going to break this up into two lectures. Today's lecture is really going to be on this concept of defining functions. So first, let's look at the problem we're going to solve, and I just picked this problem because it's a really straightforward one: the standard RC circuit. So here's an RC circuit. Uh, let me move it over here so it's a little bit better. An RC circuit with a voltage, um, uh, basically a battery, a switch, a resistor, and a capacitor. And when you close this switch, the capacitor will charge based on the voltage and the resistance here. So that's really it. We're going to look at that. And um, so first things first, uh, what is the equation that's associated with this? So here's our equation. The voltage on the capacitor is equal to the voltage of the voltage source, supply voltage uh, times in quantity 1 minus e to the minus t over rc, where r is the resistance and c is the capacitance. It's also called the time constant. And t, um, what happens is the capacitor charges over time and t is the time. So um, knowing that, and uh, this might be an equation you're familiar with, it might not be an equation you're familiar with, the reality is it does not matter. Um, because what we're doing, we're just using that equation. So first, I want to create a function that describes that function. Okay. Well, um, I can do that in Python very easily. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going over to my Python console, and this is something that you might not have seen um, because I haven't done this in, in previous assignments. I have just run the, the entire program. But if you highlight a piece of the console here and then either click this little button up here, run current cell, or control enter, it's simply going to do what that highlighted portion is. So that just basically covers that one thing. So for example, if I wanted to have you input the voltage here, I can hit control enter. Over here it's going to say input voltage and I can say 10. Okay? And I have the variable explorer up here. So if you notice, the variable v has now been set to a value of 10. Pretty interesting, right? Um, so you don't have to run the whole thing. You can run pieces of it. I could alternately, over here where it says, uh, if you see it says r equals float, input, input resistance, and ohms. Well, I could just simply say r is equal to, and the, uh, the resistance, let's say the resistance to be 10, 10. And that would do exactly the same thing. And notice that I put... Um, the R up there is, notice it put, made it an integer because of 10. I could have easily just said equals 10.0, and that would have made it a floating point. So now if you go back up here, you'll notice it's a floating point. So as you notice, I now actually have a calculator environment. I can run pieces of code, but at the same time, I can do other things. So what I'm going to, I can input directly from the console here, other things being one of those. So let's look, first look at this. Um, creating this function that in, in code. Well, this is a pretty easy function. So to create a function, I go over here and I put in the words def, and the function has to have a name. I'm going to call it capacitor charging voltage. So in other words, it's going to be the voltage that's returned from that equation. And then I'm going to pass it the parameters to use in the equation, V, R, C, and T. Well, if you remember the equation, um, it was just uh, it was simply the um, v the the original the voltage of the power supply times one minus the um, e to the minus t over R C. Well, that's expressed in the function with uh, the power the the power um, function of math is what you're going to have to use to use to get the e to the minus t over R C. So I'm going to use the 1 minus math.pow. Now, I don't have the value of e, but yes, I do, because math has the constant e. And I um, and you can look at these. You can actually inspect these, but that's relatively straightforward. So in other words, if, suppose I wanted to, I'm looking at math. I'm like, what's available to me in math? Well, I can look at help. But um, another way to do this, the control i, which, by the way, also takes a while in my version of Python, will bring up an inspector here. Um, over here in my little editor window, that should show me 
the properties and the, the methods and the um, um, what's in the object math because math is actually an object. I imported math, but it's an object over here. Um, let's see. I was having the inspector up. I didn't wait for it to come up. It does take a while to come up, and but you can try this and see it. But I'm going to go back to variable explorer so I can move forward. But that control I is just an inspector. And now what I can do is I have this function defined here. Remember in Python, the tab over means that it's part of that function. It's the name of the function, the variable inputs, and the colon, and then the actual body of the function. This function is going to have one line. It's going to return the results of that equation. Okay. So if I go over here and I can highlight that, and I hit Control-Enter, okay, that function down here in my console has now been in there. And I can actually call it. I can say capacitor charging voltage. I should have probably used something smaller. And I can pass it some numbers. Let's say I want a voltage of 10, 10.05 um, for the uh, capacitance. Whoops, I need a, I need a uh, comma there, 05. And let's say what a time one second. So if I do that, it's going to calculate with that equation with those input parameters. And the answer would be, in this case, 8.64. Well, that's kind of interesting there. I can actually define the function and call the function. And I can do that in the console. I can also do it over here in code, um, where you can see I could say print capacitor charging voltage. Now, I have to have the uh, values. Let's do that. Let's do that. The same thing we just did here, 10 with the same values, OK? 10. 0.05 and 1. I can now highlight that, hit Control Enter, and it's going to give me the same value, 8.64. So that output has just been printed to the screen. Okay, so far so good. And I'm hoping that you're seeing a whole lot of capable, useful things that you can do with this. Now, let's come up with a function that would be tremendously useful to you, such as plotting that charging with that with that function. Well, the, to do plotting, I'm going to need to come over here, and I'm going to need, in, now I'm going to, need to import a, the plotting library first. I got it. I don't have plotting natively here, so I'm going to go ahead and import the, the plotting library, which it just did. And what I did is I said import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now, if you go and look at the documentation for pyplot, it's actually very, it makes it really easy to make plots. Now I'll show you how easy that is. Down here in my function, my plotting is just plt.plot and the x and the y. Well, xp and xy, xp is an array, xyp is an array. The thing is, is I actually got to make that array if I'm going to plot the values. Well, that's easy to do. So if I come over and I say create this, uh, I define this function called plot charging with v, r, c, and t. Then I'm going to create a blank. Okay, a blank XP and a blank YP is an array. XP equals bracket bracket is a blank empty array. YP equals blank blank is an empty array. And now if you remember from previous lectures, you can create loops. So I'm going to create a loop and I'm going to have I range from 0 to 10. And I'm just going to set X equal to I times T divided by 10. Remember, since there's 10 values, you can divide by 10 and you're going to get an equal amount. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the voltage over time with 10 increments here. So x equals times i, which is going to go from 0 to 10, times t, which is going to be the overall time that you want to plot the charging to. Then I just append the x onto xp. I append it onto the array. And then yp, I simply append the value of the function, um, capacitor charging voltage, vrcx. Well, v is the past voltage, r is the past resistance, c is the past capacitance, and x is the value for the time as it ranges from 0 to t in the 10 increments, and then I plot them. OK, well, first thing i got to do is I've got to actually put this, this, uh, this function in the system. And notice I'm do doing this as a, as a single call. I'm doing it piece by piece. OK, I'm going to hit Control-Enter, and voila, that's now been input there. And here's something that's really kind of neat that I can do, plot charging. Now, the values that I had used would be the same values that I had before. I'm going to use a voltage of 10, a resistance of 10. And uh, by the way, the units, by the way, on this are important. But I'm just assuming that everything is in its native units. Uh, voltages in volts, resistance in ohms, 
capacitance in farads and time in seconds. Okay, so let's do the capacitance here. I'm going to do a capacitance of 0.05 is a good reasonable one. And then I want to plot it between uh, up to two seconds. So I should be able to close that out. And uh, it goes ahead and look at that. I get a nice, beautiful plot. Okay, now notice it doesn't have a label on the x-axis. It doesn't have a label on the uh, on x and the y-axis, but I could add those. The, the, all I have to do is just go to the PLT variable and add it. Now, I would have a difficult time doing that um, in this case because the PLT is um, inside this function, so I would need to actually return it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add one more line to this, return PLT, okay, to this. So the PLT actually gets the, the plot itself. I'm sorry, PLT is the library. Um, I'm going to return the plot, um, XPYP. And, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to experiment with this. Okay, I actually want you to experiment with it. Now, I could set a variable, but let's let's do this. Let's see what happens if I try to define this function with that. Okay, now it says it returned it. Now, what would happen? Okay, I could call the the, the plot charging like I did before, but now what if I said p is equal to plot charging, and I'm going to go ahead and call that with the same values I had before. And um, I'm see if I can remember 10, 10, 0 0.05, and 2. Okay, I get my plot there again, just like I because it did plot it up. And now um, I should have a variable up here, which is you now see P is up here in the variable explorer as a list line 2D. So now I actually know what got returned from that. And um, it's kind of nice because now I can see, okay, what is this? It's a line 2D object of matloblib.lines module. So I, it's, it's, a, it's an object. So I have that object to play with. So I could actually do other things with that object if I wanted to. So what I've done today, and this is as far as I'm going to go in lec this lecture, because we're going to go much further with this. We're going to actually use this to do more complex problems. But look at what I've done so far. I've shown that you can define variables in the console. I've shown that you can define um, um, functions right here. You can actually create functions. And I created a function that actually creates and returns a plot of the capacitor charging voltage with this. So now, hopefully you can see that the Python, and Spider specifically, um, with all of its built-in libraries that are incredible, is an incredible calculator. And you can not only use it as a calculator, you can write programs in it. Because I've still got over here my function, my, um, con my uh, Python file with all of this in it. So it can actually act as an overall just runnable program, but it can also act as a library of functions that I can use as a calculator. So now, for, for the people that are in my Programming for Engineering course, you can now start to see some of the power of what we're going to be able to do. We are going to solve some very complex problems. And in Lecture 5, we're going to go ahead and start using some numerical methods to be able to use these equations to do more, more complex things, such as, um, well, you'll see when you get there. So hopefully, you're learning a lot as you're working along in the programming. And this is all starting to make a little bit of sense. Um, but now you have this incredible calculation capability. Thank you very much. Signing out. Good programming.